what school are we at here today in we're Las at, Vegas? We're at Southwest Career and Technical Academy. And your name is? Felicia Nemchak. Okay, and you're the principal. Yes. And we were just talking a little bit, we saw one of your excellent engineering programs. Tell me about what was going on in the 70s and kind of how this all came to be in well, a nutshell. In the early 70s, uh, they opened up a vocational technical high school here. Okay. And, um, the locals know it, know it as Votech, and it is now called Southeast Career and Technical. And I was just there. You were just there. So um, <laughs> after, after many years of its existence, um, district leadership took notice that it had um, a 95% um, graduation rate, you know, plus or minus. So but kids were highly engaged. Kids were highly engaged. Right. Kids and kids were, uh, were graduating at a, at a high level. Right. And so um, district leadership decided to use some of the 1998 bond money to build more career technical academies. Okay. And so now, today, we, there are seven of us. Right. And how many kids do those serve in all seven? Do you have any idea? Roughly, how many? About, how, about I would say about eight or nine. What programs do you offer at your school here? Culinary, hospitality, okay. video game technology, web design, interior design, engineering, two fashion programs, okay. automotive, diesel technology. We have nursing, dental, and respiratory therapy. And uh, this might be a difficult question, but what programs could kids actually walk out of here school to career? All of them. All of them. So they could actually end up working in some capacity. Yes. Or they can continue on. Or they can continue right. on, yeah. And, and really what we try to teach the students is to go into industry, have a job or an internship, and go to college at the same time. We're at right here. We're in the fashion school right now, correct? Yes, and this is the ninth and 10th grade sew lab. And this is where they actually learn how to put it all together. It looks like, what, what is this here? Just some... Just a, Okay, great. Before they put up some of their projects. And the kids are here how much time per day um, as a ninth grader? As a ninth grader, they spend one block, 85 minute period. And, and is this where they actually design their stuff in here? In, in some cases, yes. Okay. Yeah. And then what do we have over here in this uh, side? Okay. Over here is once they become juniors and seniors, then they start working in the advanced sew lab where they work on Juki machines wow. that, are, uh, that are industry grade. Quite, quite an investment. Yes, yeah. very, a very good investment. So they, and these students take anything from graphic design one, uh, levels one and two to CAD to also supplement their, their curriculum. Wow, very, so very good. Uh, right now it looks like the, uh, the diesel lab. Right? Yes. And I, I guess there's, there's a, you must be the teacher? Yes. Okay, and what's your name? Uh, Danny McElroy. D Danny, is there a big need for diesel mechanics out there right now? Or? Uh, yes, there is, uh, especially in the mining industry up in the northern part of Nevada. Okay. Uh, we're trying to get a cooperation going with Cashman Equipment here in Las Vegas. All right. Uh, we want them to come in and do training with us and actually sponsor a lot of our activities. And do they, uh, what, what type of, uh, if a student starts in this program at ninth grade, could they actually walk out of here, school to career with some type of certification so they can work? Uh, they can get some of the ASC certifications. Okay. Uh, many of the employers would, would want them to go on to continue their education. Okay. Uh, many employers will actually pay for them to go to, to uh, uh, junior colleges or trade schools. Okay. And what type of uh, wages might a diesel mechanic earn? On average, probably start at fifteen dollars. Fifteen, up twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five. Somewhere in that okay, range. so pretty good money. Yes, it is. Very, and, very good. and then what? Do, what do we got over here? Uh, Just. Oh, this is our uh, our Vex. Uh, we got some students over. Okay. Over there, heating a lot. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, we have our Vex uh, equipment over here. Uh, our sophomores do a lot of Vex. Uh, Robotic type stuff, okay. sensors and things. All right. And we actually have some solar uh, yeah, right. hydrogen cells. In oh wow! Uh, the principles of engineering class is uh, finishing up a unit on uh, solar panels and hydrogen fuel cells. Right. And so their uh, activity was to build a little vehicle that could run on a hydrogen fuel cell. Wow! And this morning we had a little race with them. And uh, it was really exciting. And then yeah. what, what do we have down here? Do kids tear down engines or? Uh, we have some big diesel engines there. I okay. Guess. And uh, uh, 
the big display engines are more for display. We don't do a, a lot with those. Okay, and then this is where you can actually bring in what cars or trucks to work uh, on them. This is mainly for trucks, uh, large uh, road tractors. And you bring them in sometime. Well, we don't do a whole lot with the large road tractors. Okay. But the auto is on the other end where okay. they actually work on cars. Great. So, well, thanks for your interview. Thank, I appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. And here you can see the different types of uh, motors that the kids get to work on here. And a uh, pretty impressive program. Very, very impressive. So I'm here in the Southwest Career Tech Academy. It's a really impressive place. You can see uh, this looks somewhat like what I saw in the uh, German technical school skills. A lot of uh, CNC machines here. And, and who are you? Um, Angelo Pano, I'm an entertainment engineering teacher. And what do you do here? Um, well, we take the kids through four years of uh, technical class. They still have other regular high school courses. But with me, um, uh, with the title of entertainment engineering, we kind of try to figure out what that meant and after going to all the industry companies uh, the big push was they need to understand uh, CNC and automation uh, okay is their biggest need so I started looking at what we had and the majority of the machines you see here we got from other programs that close around the district and, and and why is it CNC automation that's the way everything is going now uh, automation robotics okay um, the way that these CNC machines work is the same way that the kids toy robots work right it's the same way that all the rigging in motion in Cirque du Soleil shows work. right so uh, we start them off with basic, basic engineering skills as hand drafting and, and CAD design second year is electronics they do basic hand electronics we start working with the Arduinos okay uh, so those are little 25 cent microcontrollers right and we take those and in integrate them into everything that we do for motion control so they're learning programming electronics and uh, automation and how many kids do you have in this program here 35 students per year so I total out about 100 120 students total. okay if these kids get out uh, after their senior year, could they find fine work in this type of work? Uh, they do. I have students that are already out working in the industry. A lot of them are in their first years of uh, engineering, right. engineering at UNLV and some right. other colleges. Okay. And uh, they're really they're very successful. But if they didn't want to go on to engineering at UNLV or another college, could they find work uh, school to career right after school? Is there work yeah. out there? With uh, the way that. Um, industry is now we're in the 1940s through 60s right it was very specific the skill set right. that, each, that each course needed here it's become a lot more uh, diverse so instead of having them understand exactly how one CNC machine works right. and how to program and code that one okay I make them understand exactly how the CNC machine works uh, uh, underneath the hood how the okay. electronics work so they can walk into any company and sit down and very quickly go through training on that on their machines. It and looks like we we have some guitars here. What's what's going on here? These these look like very professional, okay. high end guitars. Okay. Well, I have to give credit to um, uh, guitarbuilding.org is a website set up by the National Science Foundation, okay. Fender Guitar, and uh, uh, Purdue University. All right. And they put together basically a program where you get a kit, this body already cut out, right. this neck already cut out, and then you have to hand cut the headstock okay. and all your pieces. And you get 15 kits and your 15 students build those 15 guitars. Wow. So uh, we found very quickly though that being here on the East Coast, on the West Coast, and then being in Pennsylvania would cost us 35 bucks a pop just to ship them here. Sure. So we asked for five, and then my students reverse engineered them, we put them in CAD, and then we cut our blanks ourselves. Wow. After the uh, on the CNC machine that we looked at. So then you went from this guitar here to this looks a little bit more high end. This was a custom design uh, for the students, so they actually figured out uh, by taking pictures off the web. This is a, a Gibson GS style. Wow. They took this guitar body and traced it in uh, Illustrator, yeah. exported it to our 2D CAD program. Auto Impressive. CAD, and then put on CNC and cut it. So let me get this right. So basically all guitars now that you see like this would all be uh, CNC? Uh, the, uh, the there's major. a lot of them, the, all the lower end ones. Yeah, all the lower end ones come out of a CNC machine. And the higher end are higher all? Higher end are all custom. Custom, yeah. yeah. Um, we really found that there was a big problem connecting the neck to the body. Yes. Um, and that was causing, if you have 10 or 12 students at a community college, it's a lot easier to control, but with 35 students building guitars, you get a lot of errors, and I wanted every guitar to be by, finished. By the way, do you have 35 students? Do you have an assistant, or is it just the, the ratio would be 35 to 1 to me. per class? Yep, and so I usually have three or four students who really step up and, and help me 
run right. things, and they, I, I try to make sure the students take on their own responsibilities. Sure. In, in Germany, the ratios were more about 10 to 12 to 1. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so. That'd be so nice. But uh, um, what we actually did is we went back uh, last year, and we took the guitar in itself, and we put together uh, the guitar completely in 3D using SolidWorks. Wow. So we built the guitar from scratch. Very, imp the top. very impressive.